My name is Charlie, and I have a little brother with Pex One named Finn. Oh I help! I can't do it! Glass Children refers to children who have siblings that have some kind of difficulty. So it could be that they have a major illness, it could be that they're addicted or they're incarcerated or whatever kind of takes their parents' attention you know, towards one child instead of the other. Finn doesn't have a, he doesn't have a ton of words, but he'll call Charlie a sweet brother. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's still there. It's still there. It's still there. He physically follows Charlie everywhere, and then he also just kind of follows his emotional lead, and if Charlie's okay, Finn's okay. It was, it, it was really hard to tell when, we were, when he was really young. Um, what was what was going on? He wasn't reaching the milestones that he should be reaching. He wasn't sitting up. He wasn't crawling. I knew he had always had something special. We like to call him a unicorn. You know, the challenging part was really all internal, the not knowing. We were always kind of looking a few years into the future. So it wasn't until we did the full genome testing that we, you know, landed on PAX-1. There's one over there! Where? Come, show me. There's one over there! Look, under you. Ah, yes. Yep, there'll be more tomorrow. Um, well, it's a genetic disorder that affects your face and um, your brains. Pax1 syndrome is a rare genetic condition caused by a mutation in the Pax1 gene on chromosome 11. People with Pax1 have global developmental and gross motor delays, are nonverbal at a young age, have sensory processing disorder, and motor planning issues. Some have seizures, difficulty eating and drinking, or various eye issues. Everyone with Pax1 shares common facial features of a button nose, big wide set eyes with arched eyebrows and long eyelashes, and a wide, bright smile. In 2018, there are just under 100 people diagnosed with Pax1 in the world. And then when we got the diagnosis, we realized that it changes everything. You go into research mode and you really try to figure out what's, you know, what are the, what do the other kids have? If you do get a diagnosis that's genetic, you will be able to reach out to other people who have that diagnosis and your world will shift. I mean, we definitely feel like we have an extended family with other families that have Pax1 kids. We could start living our life. through the trees. Describing Charlie and how he relates to Finn is, he really does as much as anyone possibly could for a sibling. At the same time, treats him like siblings treat each other. Oh no, did you get wet? You right? You got wet? <laughs> As a parent, you're sort of exhausted at the end of the day, as we all are. Yeah. Charlie takes up that time and goes, you know, has all the energy to, you know, interact with Finn and play with Finn and do what other things that might not be the easiest at the end of the day. Or if I can't, you know, get him to do something I need him to do, you know, Charlie will say, Mom, Mom, I got it. And he, he gets Finn to do it. He has like, he's like the Finn whisperer. Oh, 
little higher. Get it, Vinny, get it. I got it. Twist. Oh, oh, twist. Both hands. I think where the understanding lies at this point in time is really with the families that have kids with PAX-1 and, and the shared information that we've developed. Abby and Charlie sat in the back seat and, you know, Abby said, yeah, it's hard when they're in the hospital, when, the, when, you're, when your brother's sick, right? And Charlie said, yeah. And they just kind of had this conversation where they were able to talk to each other about, you know, the stress of having, like, on a family vacation and you're little brother has to go to the hospital. And we had a time when we had to go to the hospital and Charlie just was not happy about it. And I snapped at him and didn't feel good about it. And, and then also at that same, during that same time, I had noticed that Charlie was like offering to help and offering to help and offering to help. And it was actually making me feel agitated. No, that's mine! You know, we try to remind ourselves that it's not Charlie's job to take care of Finn, but he does it, you know, sort of willingly a lot of the time. Mom, I can't do it! I came in! What happened? It's stuck! Are you swimming? It's stuck! Are you swimming? No, pull him! Oh. I can't reach him! Pull, pull. Yeah, So it was after this hospital visit, and the next day I just sat with the on the couch with Charlie, and I just said, you know, that was really hard, wasn't it? And, and he said, yeah, yeah, it was hard. Oh, oh. Oh, whoa. And I just said, I'm sorry that I talked to you like that. And I said, you know, you're so helpful, and I'm so grateful for all the help that you give me. Drop the cup in the leaves. Bonk. But you can also be mad, and you can also not like Finn, and you can also not like having to help. This was good! You made that? You can also say no, and that's okay, because I love you just for being in this world. Woo! Woo! Oh, look at that! Oh, he's cute! And he was just looking at me and his eyes were just like these big saucers and he didn't take his eyes off of me and he just kept nodding and I felt like that was a big change for our relationship. For Charlie, growing up with Finn has really, you know, I think given him a window onto a completely other world with kids with disabilities, where he's definitely gained this other sense around, you know, kids that may need help or need a little bit more time or it may require more patience to get through them. That's one of the really phenomenal things that I think has come out of his experience with Finn. Well, I think Charlie has an understanding by living with Finn and has an understanding of Finn that can change the world. Some people ask, like, when I tell them that there's lots of the PAX kids, they'll be like, oh, all the face like that, or they all have the same stuff. But it kind of makes me feel a little bit insecure and protective, but it also makes me feel good that people want to learn about PAX 1. I try to put aside that he's always going to be there. He's always going to be He didn't need to do anything for us to love him. And, and I think that just goes hand in hand with how we feel about Finn, you know, that Finn doesn't need to do anything for us to love him. Well, I think that his superpowers are bringing out the goodness in people.